and welcome back to my YouTube channel, True Blue Faith. I am so excited that you're here and since you clicked on today's video, we get to spend the next 10-ish minutes talking about what it looks like to start a small group and what it looks like to lead a small group or Bible study or community group, whatever you want to call it. I think that these small groups, Bible studies, book clubs are a great way to build community and cultivate relationships. They are, or they should be, I guess they can be, they should be safe spaces to grow and to learn and to, yeah, just be in relationship with one another. So obviously there aren't really right or wrong ways to start and lead a small group, but I am just going to speak from my personal personal experience and give a few tips to how you can lead and be a part of a successful, whatever that looks like for you, a successful small group or Bible study. But before we get started, I want to invite you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button and join this community. I love seeing it grow so much and I just feel so honored that I get to walk alongside of you in your faith journey. So today I have a handful of tips for you to start and lead a small group Bible study book club. I'm probably just going to call it small group throughout this video, but that hopefully just encompasses all types of small group, whatever small group you are interested in starting. So in the beginning of this video, there were a few clips put together from my own personal small group. It was just me and my roommates. We read a book together this past semester and used that book to really grow and challenge one another. And it was a really great experience, which led me to creating this video to hopefully give you encouragement and confidence to go and start your own small group. So before you start a small group, I would encourage and recommend to pray about stepping into this commitment. By starting a small group, you are stepping into a leadership role and it doesn't have to be a huge commitment by any means, but it's a commitment that takes time. It's a commitment that takes preparation. So I would really, truly encourage you to pray before stepping into it and making sure that there's space in your heart, making sure that there's space in your life, both time and emotional space for you to walk alongside other people. It's not always super easy and it can be exhausting, especially when you are looked to as the leader of a small group. But as I say that, that is just like a word of warning. I don't want it to scare you off. It's not like some huge thing that has to be done perfectly, absolutely not. But you do need to be prepared for what what you're stepping into. So to start a small group, I would invite you to go ahead and just take a few minutes, take a few days to really step back and envision what do I want this to look like? You do not have to start a forever group. If you are interested in just reading or starting off with one book with this group to see if it's something that you like doing, that's perfectly fine. So this vision might look like, okay, I want to read this one book with a small group of women with a small group of couples and we're gonna meet weekly. So that is kind of your vision going into starting this small group. You should also think about where you want to meet. Do you wanna open up your house every week for the next handful of weeks to get through a book or a study or would you wanna meet at a coffee shop? If it's warm enough, would you wanna meet at a park outside? The more information that you can take to people when you're inviting them to join this small group, the better because it's easier for people to commit when they know what they are committing to. So if this is your first time ever starting a small group or a Bible study, I would encourage you to think small. So maybe think of four to 10, four to 12 people people that you think would be able to make this commitment to walk alongside of you, be vulnerable, and just be a part of a group and a community. The smaller the group, the more intimate you can be. The deeper those conversations can go when everyone has a chance to chime in and talk and speak about what's on their heart. If you have a group of 20 people, not everyone's going to have a chance to speak often, and that could be kind of detrimental to growing an intimate life group. So the next thing is to decide what you want to read or what you want to study. A few suggestions that I have if you're looking at books, um, the one that you saw in the intro, That Sounds Fun by Annie F. Downs was so fun to read and it really sparked our imagination and it was really easy for all of us to connect even though we all come from different areas of life. I think that would be a great book to start with. Another book that 
that I would recommend is Cultivate by Laura Casey, I'm pretty sure. Or another one, if these are kind of people who are more mature in their faith, um, The Voice of God or Hearing the Voice of God by Priscilla Shire. I will have all of these linked below, but those are just the top three recommendations I would have that just come to the top of my mind. If none of those sound interesting and you're more interested in maybe studying a specific passage or book, you can always connect with your local church and ask them what resources they have. Or you can also go and look at like faithlife.com. They usually have a ton of great resources. So once you have your group of people that you want to reach out to and the book or the study that you want to dive into, next think about two or three potential times that you can commit to for the next so many weeks to get through this study and send those out as options. This is, when it comes to a place to meet, this is my personal opinion from my experience, I think that it is best to meet at one place per unit. So one place per study, one place per book. So if you want to open up your house for the next five weeks to read one book, that is a consistent place to meet and that's very generous of you. Um, if you're not interested in opening up your house, you, you can also say, let's meet at this coffee shop these days or let's meet at this park these days at this time. The more consistent that you can make it, the easier it will be for people to open up, feel safe, yeah, and just create that really strong community that you might be desiring or another person might be desiring. Obviously, when I say that, it's important to remember that things come up and you might need to change your location. If you're meeting outside, it might storm. If you are meeting in your house, you know you might get sick. So things do come up, but just to make the path as clear as possible for people to see and commit to will make it easier to be successful. Okay, so we've got the starting a small group down. We've got the people, we've got the place, we've got the book, we've got the times. You've sent out the invitation. Your first night of meeting a small group is here. So what does that mean for you in a leadership role? Since you've stepped into this leadership role, you've committed to this leadership role, you need to come prepared especially for the first couple of weeks, they're gonna be looking at one person to lead and start these conversations. So if you're reading a book, that means having read the book, having discussion questions. For some books, you can find discussion questions online. It's not like you need to create your own discussion questions. And that might be something to consider when you're picking out a book or a study. But it means you need to read, you need to be prepared for these questions because they're gonna look to you as that one point person. When you open up your first group meeting, I recommend by starting in prayer. When you pray, invite God into the space, invite God to give people peace in their hearts so that they feel comfortable sharing and opening up and listening to one another. In the beginning of the video, you saw one of my favorite activities. That's a great get to know you activity. It's a great check-in activity. I call it snapshot. One of my other friends calls it solarium, I think. But essentially, they're a deck of cards. You lay them out. Every card has a different picture on it. And then you can ask questions like, or you can give prompts like, pick a card that really shows how you are feeling today. Or if it's with a spiritual group, you can say, pick a card that demonstrates your relationship with God right now. So then people in the group can pick their card and then you can go around the group and give everyone a chance to show their card and help use this photo as a reference as they share what's on their heart or what's on their mind. So after you do the check-in, you do the prayer and you're ready to get into the discussion questions, I want to encourage you that silence is okay. Silence is actually really, really great and really important sometimes in small group settings, especially when the group is getting to know one another. Sitting in silence is really important because it gives people or some people who may not be the first to speak up, it gives them the opportunity to collect their thoughts and gain their confidence, maybe feel a little bit of pressure to speak up. And you can start by introducing that to your group. You can say, you know, if we sit in silence with a discussion question for a little bit, that is totally okay. So then people are prepared and aware that they don't have to jump on every question and fill the silence. When people decide to speak or give their insight or share something that's on their mind, 
Affirm them. Say, wow, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for being vulnerable. You also affirm people for sharing something that's on their heart. If you recognize that one person is being dominant and controlling the situation, I want to give you permission that it's okay to maybe ask someone who's being quieter what they think. Like, hey, what do you think about this question? So-and-so, do you have an answer? Have you thought about this question? So it's really important to make sure that the conversation is equal and even and everyone's getting the opportunity to share what's on their mind and also everyone has a safe space to be heard so those are some of the tips to leading a group you've had a couple of meetings everything's gone great you are coming to the end of your first book and as a leader you get to decide do i want to do another one or do i need to take a step back if you need to take a step back that is totally fine that's actually very wise if you can recognize that you can ask if the group seems to have good dynamics you can ask someone else to say hey i need to step back for the next book or for the next three months would someone else be willing to kind of take on this leadership position and they don't need to commit to leading forever but just one unit at a time if you think that the group could use a little bit more dynamic you could talk to your group about inviting more people if people have become comfortable with one another it's really important to make sure that their voices are heard in that conversation if they only feel comfortable sharing what's happening in their life with the five people who are sitting around them then they might not be okay inviting more people and that is okay you really need to respect people's boundaries as a leader when you're thinking about what book you want to read next if you don't have a specific book in mind you can also ask your group, is there anyone who has a specific book that they would recommend? And then you can vote on it or as a leader, you can honestly just make the executive decision. The last tip I have is something that I've experienced as a small group leader is so you have a couple great units, everyone is showing up, it's going so well, but then you have one person who starts to not show up but maybe they're still a part of the group chat or maybe they only show up every so often. People feel most comfortable to share, express, open up when they are in a consistent environment. Although it might be awkward as a leader, you might need to reach out to that person who's not being that consistent and say, hey, I see that you have a lot going on right now. Is it okay if maybe you step back for this unit and you can pop back in on the next one or whenever you're ready again? And if they say yes, ask them to remove themselves from the group chat or let them know and say, I am going to go ahead and start a new group chat. So you can still have those intimate conversations in a group chat checking in with everyone during the week without them feeling like they can't say something because they're not quite sure where this specific person stands in the group. Like I said, it can be awkward. I've definitely had that conversation and I've done it wrong and I've hurt some feelings and then I've had that conversation where I've done it right and people have been so understanding and they're like, yeah, I do have a lot going on. Um, thanks for recognizing that. I just felt pressure like I needed to stay in. To recognize that there's other things going on and giving people the space to back out at the end of a unit or whenever you just recognize they might be ready to step back is important and that's a really good skill to have as a leader. When someone comes ready to share something that's going on in their life, they want to know who they're going to share it with, they want to know who's going to be there, and they want to make sure that they are sharing it with people who are going to walk alongside of them and show empathy and love them through it. So as a leader, you have the great and lovely privilege of providing that space for people. Like I said, small groups can change lives. Finding a community is so important, especially when you are trying to live out the gospel. You need people who are going to do life with you. So a fun final tip to be the one of the great leaders, something that might make you stick out or make your group stick out, find out birthdays, special events, anniversaries, find out things that are important to people, special days that are important to people, and celebrate. Celebrate the person, celebrate what they love. Let's say they have a kid graduating or they're graduating from college, celebrate them. It is so important to celebrate, especially when you might have a week of hard conversations or maybe you just finished a heavy book. Go celebrate someone, find something to celebrate and make sure that you have serious conversations, but then you also have a lot of fun. And also it's just awkward when you might show up for a small group and someone's like, 
it was my birthday yesterday and no one knew. So just make sure that you have those special dates so that you can be there and support people the best way possible. So those are all the tips I have for you for starting and leading a small group. These are pretty like overhead and surface level tips. So if you have any questions or you have any additional tips, leave them in the comments below. And if you are not yet subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today and I hope that you find these tips helpful and useful and good luck starting your small group. I hope that you guys all stay safe and healthy and I will see you next time. God bless.